Can you call Trace to the forms packets are over there? Ah, good morning, everyone. We're here. Thank you. So this is a detention docket for the 323rd District Court, Juvenile Court in Tarrant County. Because of the Supreme Court of Texas 22nd emergency order regarding coronavirus, we are not having in-court proceedings unless it's not possible to do it remotely. And in order to comply with the Texas Open Courts Act, we are broadcasting this proceeding on YouTube so that the public can observe these proceedings if they choose to do so. All right, so the first one is Braden Hood with Ms. Herrick. All right, Mr. Hood. So this is a detention hearing. I think you were uh, before Judge Porter yesterday. Yes, sir. Well, I know you have certain rights. You have the right to remain silent, but if you give up that right, anything you say at a detention hearing cannot be used against you at any other type of court setting. You also have a right to an attorney. If you or your family cannot afford an attorney, uh, I will provide one for you. And finally, you do have uh, the right to have a detention hearing every 10 days while you're here in our detention facility. All right, so Ms. Herrick, if I remember correctly, he was on probation for UMV and then was arrested for aggravated robbery. Yes. Okay. Then let's see. He's brought in, he was positive for marijuana. He's previously successfully completed TYRC and two bouts of electronic monitoring, but had some other problems. All right. All right, so this is the one victim met up on Instagram from Instagram to buy a cell phone. And she arrived there. Suspect displayed a handgun, pointed at her, and demanded money. So she gave cash, food stamp card, cash app card. Described the driver's young buck male with medium dreads and bad acne. And there are other people in the car as well. And she said she knew the suspect from school. Identified a tattoo. Detective searched the Instagram account, confirmed the person with the tattoo. Later on was pulled over in the car that matched the description of the one in the robbery. It had guns in, guns in the vehicle. All right. Okay, Ms. Herrick, you have a question yes. this uh, So it's my understanding at his first detention hearing with you, 
um, you highly encourage him to get on and stay on level 10 and then uh, you would consider his release. He's been on level 10 since last Sunday, um, I guess 10 days ago or so, and stayed on level 10 since then. We had a detention hearing yesterday with Judge Porter, and Judge Porter's only concern was that he wanted to speak to mom um, and ask her some questions. She wasn't there on the Zoom hearing yesterday, but she is here today. Sparkle, um, she's muted and I don't see video, but she is here. Um, and so we're just requesting his release today. Which one's mom? Sparkle McGillivray. Ms. McGillivray, are you there? <clears throat> There she is. Okay, Miss McGilvery. All right, so my main question for you is who's, who's Kia Soul is that? Uh, I don't know whose car that was. Okay, do you know who he was, he was with? No, I've, uh, I've heard, but I don't know who the, the guy is. Okay, there were two at the time of the robbery. Do you know any of those people that he was with on July 24th? No, I didn't even know it was two. I just know. Ma'am, ma you have to stay still. You can't walk around. Ma'am, you can't walk around. Okay, I was trying to turn the fan off so I could hear you. Okay, the fan should have been off before this started. Okay, well, I don't know. I didn't know who he was with. Okay, do you know where the gun came from? No. What about from November of last year, the, the stolen car? Do you know whose car that was? No. All right, well, I mean, tell me what Braden's doing right. What he's doing right? Yes. Uh, sometimes he does what he's supposed to and then well, he gets around the wrong people and goes off and does stuff like he, he did. You know where he's getting the weed from? No. You know how much weed he smokes? Uh, I'm sure, pretty sure it's a lot. I mean, you don't smell it on him? I mean, yeah, I smell it, but hey, most of the time, see, like this last time, he was at my mom's house when all this happened. Was he supposed to be staying at your mom's house? His, his probation officer knew he was staying like sometimes with me and sometimes with my mom. So how long would he stay with your mom? Uh, like a few days. So maybe where's like, the baby coming from? Is there a baby, Miss McGillary, is there a yeah. baby next to you? No, that's my, that's a baby next to me. Can you, can you go to a place, you know, you can't bring children into the courtroom, right? This is like a court. That's why I missed court yesterday because I don't have. Mm. There you go. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, my husband is at work and I'm the only parent here. Okay, good. Judge, if I can intervene a little bit Please. right now. Um, I talked to Brayden for quite a while yesterday and uh, Sparkle is correct. He does, and probation knew that he splits his time between mom and grandma. He, um, it sounds to me like he's much better supervised at grandma's house. There are fewer kids there. Uh, it's just him and his twin brother that go over there instead of, I think there's five siblings at mom's house. Um, and so with that being the case, and, and Brayden's definitely on board, um, we would request that he be released to his grandma's house where he is much better supervised. But, I mean, Ms. Herbert, on the other hand, he was staying at his grandmother's when Allegedly, this aggravated robbery happened. Right? Yeah, that's what she said. I that didn't sound right to me from my conversations with him. He says that his friends that are negative influence to him are closer to his mom's house.
Okay, so Ms. Gonzalez, the, when he was arrested, there were guns in the car. Did those guns match the description of the gun used in the robbery? Ms. Gonzalez isn't here today. I'm praying for her. Okay. Ms. Campos, do you, do you know? Are you familiar with that? Or if you're not, that's fine. It's not your case. I do not know. What I do know is that he is scheduled to have a psychological evaluation on Sunday. And um, what the probation officer did tell me is that um, sometimes it's difficult for mom to get him to those appointments. And so we would like for him to stay in detention so that he can get his psychological evaluation on the 16th. And this case is also set for resource staffing on the 31st. Right. Mom, I have a question. When, when did he get that tattoo? He's been having that tattoo for like almost six months now, probably longer than that. I think he had it the last time he came to court. If Where did he get the tattoo him. from? I don't know. He came home one day with the tattoo. I mean, Ms. Herrick, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt of looking at this, but like this, there's absolutely not adequate supervision at home. I mean, mom doesn't know he's getting tattooed, doesn't know where he is, doesn't know where he gets a gun, doesn't know where he gets a weed from, doesn't know who he's hanging out with. Right. Can't even, you know, I mean, I say can't. She's hands are full with a young child, a toddler, let alone with a 16 year old that's going out and getting tattoos <laughs> possession of guns. Uh, so, Mr. Hood, if you want to ask me a question, I don't really want you to talk about like what happened on the offense, all okay. right? Your yeah. attorney doesn't want you to talk about that either, but you if you have a question for me, I'm more than happy to answer it for you. Uh, It's not like really about the events. And like, I was just gonna say like, cause like the tattoo is my brother name. Like one of my best friends died. So like, that's where I got the tattoo from. So, I got it last year in September. So which parent gave you permission to get the tattoo? Nobody. All right, so you see the problem that you're not following the rules. Like for whatever reason you have, but at 16 years old, you're not allowed to make that decision and without your parents being on board. If you're doing what you want to do, you see how that gives me worry. Yes, sir. Can I say something else, too? Well, okay. And is it about the I, tattoo? Is it no. about the tattoo? Okay. No. okay. If it's about oh. weed, guns, tattoo. being out at night, uh, robberies, anything like that, like your attorney and I do not want you to talk about that, all right? Uh, and it was like... Uh, like and my mama, like my mama, like she she do watch me, but like my granny, like I stay. That's why I'm really at my granny house most of the time, cause like my granny keep me like, cause when I'm over there, she keep me like, yeah, she keep me focused. She okay, let me. Hold on I really don't think you should talk about this either, and the reason why is because ultimately deciding whether you get probation or go to TJJD yeah. has to do with where there's a good place for you to stay or not. If you start talking about your grandma and being over there then that may make your attorney's job harder in arguing uh, on whether you should be at grandma's place or not. Because I'm based on what your mom told me, I'm kind of worried about your grandma being adequate supervision because you know, evidently this aggravated robbery happened when you're supposed to be at grandma, right? So I don't want you to cast any more doubt on that. Ms. Herrick, I think I'm, I'm right on this one, aren't I? I, I don't think you're correct that he was at grandma's house, uh, but I understand why you don't want to talk about it anymore. Yes. Yes. I, I just don't I want you to, to put your attorney in a spot where she can't argue something mm -hmm. in the future. You see what I mean? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, but Mr. Hood, just based on the seriousness of this, you know, I, I take kids with guns with the highest level. I'm most concerned about that. The fact that you're on probation at the time gives me a big worry too, right? So yeah, at this okay. point, I want to keep on detaining you. Yes, sir? Can I talk, can I talk to my attorney? Yeah, she yeah, can I'll call you. you. I'm not going to... Yeah, I'm not gonna put off the whole court setting because there's other kids that I need to get to. Mm -hmm. So, but she can call you. 
Yep. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. So I'm going to detain you for now. You'll see a judge uh, if you're here for the next 10 days. But I just want to make sure you understand you're on probation, you're smoking weed, uh, somebody is putting you with a robbery with a gun in your hand, you're pulled over with a gun in the car. Uh, I'm just very, very concerned about you following the rules or accepting supervision or not. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Hood. Dr. Price. Thank you, Judge. May I be excused? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Eric. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you too. Return sucker. Ms. McGonigal. Oh, no, Ms. O'Neill's here. Hello. Good morning. Mr. Tucker, I'm Judge Kim. This is a detention hearing. And so you've been here for 10 days. So the law says you have to see a judge every 10 days while you're here. You need to decide whether to keep you or to release you. If I keep you here, you have to see a judge every 10 days after today. You have the right to remain silent, but if you give up that right, anything you say at a detention hearing cannot be used against you at any other type of court setting. Finally, you have a right to an attorney. If you or your family cannot afford an attorney, I will provide one for you. All right, so Mr. Tucker, Looking at this, you were placed in July 1st on probation for evading arrest with a motor vehicle. And your drug test was clean. <coughs> and part of the conditions of your probation was to get on electronic monitor. So, let's see, on July 27th, you were outside the house from 6 to 7.30. You've had multiple violations with electronic monitor for you going outside the house. On July 24th, your monitor equipment was changed out just to make sure it's not the equipment. You were told that if you had another violation, we would issue a warrant for you. You were told to stay inside the house. And you deny leaving the home, even though the electronic monitor says you are outside the home. So, Ms. Washington, did you verify the GPS tracking? Um, yes, Your Honor. I don't have the maps before me. I, I don't I don't need the maps. I'm just wondering. Yes. So when he was gone from 5.56 a.m. to 7.29 a.m., you know about how far he went, how far the monitor went? I'm not sure. I can't remember. Again, uh, there was one point where he went, and it was another apartment complex. Okay, so it wasn't like the front porch or the the... No, I think he left, actually left from the home. Okay. All right. All right. And All right. this has been going on since he's been on my caseload. Judge Terry did order him to be detained until he reached level one. He is currently on level one right now. Um, I did speak with him yesterday to, you know, encourage him again to make sure he abide by the rules on the monitor. Um, right. He does have an FPP assessment appointment on the 30th. All right. So... I'm gonna make this really simple. Mr. Tucker, did you violate the EM or not? Sir? Did you violate the electronic monitor or not? Did you no. go outside your home or to another complex or not? No, I live, like I live and I went like. Hey, that's all I need is I wanna make sure we have good communication, okay? Yes, sir. <clears throat> what you're saying now can't be used against you at, at the end of the hearing. They can't violate your probation because of this right now because you admitted it to me, okay? They can because the evidence may show, the maps may show you left, but this is a conversation with you and me, okay? One of my biggest pet peeves is, is somebody lying to me, okay, lying to the court, you just, nothing good happens. All right, so now you understand that the mantra keeps track of you, right? Yes, sir. You understand if you step outside the house, we're gonna know that you stepped outside the house, right? Yes, sir. You understand that because you didn't cut off the monitor, I feel better because I have an idea where you were. You weren't at a game room or in a trap house or, you know, something like that. You were legitimately somewhere and we could track you. So it was good you didn't cut off the monitor. 
Okay. So if I release you back on the electronic monitor, can you follow those rules? Yes, sir. Okay. Will you follow those rules? Yes, sir. Okay. You mean that that means that you can't leave your home? You got that, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So I'll give you another chance to release an electronic monitor. Do you understand? We're going to have the same conversation next time, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Miss O'Neill, please forgive me for asking the direct questions, but it's okay. I, I want to release him, but I can't have him denying the. He no. he understands everything now. We had a long talk, and he he gets it. Okay, good. All right. So, Terrence, I'm I'm signing this order to release you. I'm releasing you on the electronic monitor. Okay. Yes, sir. A large part of this is the fact that you turned yourself in. If we had to come and get you and find you, we'd be having a different conversation. But when we told you, hey, you got to come in, your mom and you came to turn yourself in, and now you're admitting that you understand how it works, you're not going to break the rules again, I'll give you another chance. Okay? Yes, sir. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, so, like, um, like, I was just trying to see how, I do, how, how do I do my community service? Cause like they they text my mama phone, but I need like I, I was trying to see if they could text it to my phone. Yep, talk to Miss Washington. She will let you know. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Any, any other questions, Mr. Tucker? No, sir. All right. Are you gonna see me again anytime soon? Uh, I hope not. No, sir. Come on, man. No, sir. Okay. Are you gonna see me anytime in the long term? No, sir. All right. I hope not. All right. Thank you, Terrence. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. May I be excused? Yes, yeah, good to see you, Miss O'Neill. Good to see you. Thank you. I had the monitor. I kept them here. Estrella Ramirez. Your Honor, uh, Ms. Ramirez is in CPS custody and there should be two parties from CPS on the Zoom link. Uh, Mr. Mendoza, who's an investigator and Ms. Ruiz, who's her ongoing caseworker. Hey, hello, Ms. Ruiz. Mr. Mendoza, are you here? Nope, oh, okay. Well, yes, sir. I'm, I'm here, sir. Oh, there you go. All right. Okay. So, Estrella, this is a detention hearing. The law says when a child is brought to our facility, you have to see a judge within two days and have to decide whether to keep you in custody to release you. <laughs> if I keep you in custody, the law says you have to see a judge every 10 days while you're here. You do have a right to remain silent, but if you give up that right, anything you say at a detention hearing cannot be used against you at any other type of court setting. Finally, you do have a right to an attorney. If you or your family cannot afford an attorney, I will provide one for you. Okay, so CPS, so I guess let's lay the ground rule. Is she currently in custody of, of the department? Is Ms. Ruiz? That, that, that is correct. Okay, all right. Now, is it um, permanent conservatorship, temporary? Is there a pending case? No, it's a permanent conservatorship. Her parental rights have been terminated. Okay, great, for both parents. It corrects. Okay, how long has she been uh, in DPS's care, DFPS's care? Um, about four years. Okay. All right. And where was the termination out of? What county? Webb County. Webb County. Okay. All right, Estrella. Let's see, you told already you've had a hard life. So you're almost 17 years old. Let's see. Yesterday, Arlington Police brought you here. They're saying that on August 9th, there are two separate calls involving residents of two neighboring apartments. The first was an attempted motor vehicle theft with a suspect and his girlfriend, Estrella. The second occurred at two o'clock in the afternoon. The confrontation with the vehicle owner and Damien and Estrella. When the police got there, the victim said that they saw Shields and his girlfriend confronted them about the damages done to her vehicle and demanded restitution. Shields verbally lashed out on her. His mother and sister exit and began to shout and curse at the victim as well. The victim's adult son filmed the confrontation. At some point, Estrella allegedly charged the victim, punched her in the head with a closed fist and scratched her arm before Shields' family pulled her off and the victim and away from the scene. 
Police saw scratching, which was bleeding, but she refused medical attention. Shield's family was interviewed, confirmed the incident and the assault, and told the police that the victim is always filming and confronting them. The next day, at 8.30 in the morning, police were called back when the victim saw Estrella walking around the premises. They approached her, confronted her. She gave a fake name of Star Martinez and hesitated before providing the information and misspelled her name twice. And then she admitted her actual name, said she's a runaway. Confirmed the fact of the assault the preceding day and gave a false name because she was scared since she knew she was a runaway. So they took her into custody. So, you have a case out of Laredo, Texas. You were in a Houston area group home, which you ran from on July 7th. And so CPS wants to pick you up from our detention center, but could not get here before today. So that's why we're having detention here. All right. So is she just in, where is she in Houston? She was in, in an RTC, yes, sir. She ran away from there with, with two other girls. Which one? Uh, so, uh, Chelsea's place. All right. And Ms. Ruiz, you are currently in Webb County. Then, yes, sir. Correct. Okay. Also, why we couldn't uh, pick her up yesterday is we, we have no placement for her right now. Mm -hmm. um, they are actively searching for a placement, but we just haven't been able to come up with one because of her history. Right. Okay. So, Estrella, look, I just want to have like a conversation with you, okay? I can't imagine how tough your life has been right, for the last four or maybe 10 or 16 years. Okay. What I'm going to let you know, though, is as a child, you have very limited rights. And the laws in Texas, in some ways, are very child-friendly. In some ways, they're very not child-friendly. I get that. Okay? I'm not saying that this is fair. I'm just telling you it is what it is. And when you become, uh, I guess, a ward, you know, when you when you go into uh, CPS's care, then there are all kinds of laws that are meant to help you. And unfortunately, sometimes the laws actually make your life worse. And I, I understand. I'm not saying that this is perfect. What I'm saying is, that there are just certain rules that have to be followed, whether they're good rules or not, okay? because it's the law. You understand what I'm saying so far? Like, I'm not asking you to agree with me, but you understand what I'm saying, right? Yes, sir. Okay. That being said, there's nothing you can do about the fact that you're currently in foster care. Okay? There's nothing I can do about that. It just, it is what it is. And in some ways, it's got to be incredibly frustrating and in a lot of ways, what I see is you are being cheated out of what a normal 16-year-old girl should be going through. And life has done that to you, and that's just not fair. And I get that. Okay? What I'm saying is, as a judge, I just have to make sure the law is followed. Okay? I didn't write the law. I don't really like all the laws, but they just have to be followed. And I hope you understand what I'm saying, that when the courts are involved, that you're expected to follow the laws as well, Okay, just because they're the laws. A lot of laws that you don't like, I get it but you still have to follow them, okay? And if not, you end up with seeing judges and coming into detention centers and just makes your life worse, okay? So this is my thought, right? You're currently in the custody of the state of Texas as a foster child, so I have to release you to, I, I want to release, I don't have to release you, but I want to release you to the foster, uh, to the FPS, because I'd rather you be in an RTC or in a foster home or a placement rather than Kimbo, okay? Kimbo's not the right place for you, our detention center. Okay. Now, that being said, you run away from Houston, you end up in Tarrant County, and you know that's not going to work out well for you, right? I mean, you know you're a runaway. So here's the thing. Like, I don't want to keep you here, but I got to make sure you don't run away and go off and do your own thing again. Okay? I'm not stressed out about this assault charge. I'm not stressed out about this failed ID charge. Okay? That's, not, that's not killing me. What's killing me is that you're coming from Houston to Fort Worth without anybody knowing and trying to trying to kind of be grown up before you need to. Okay? You understand, Estrella, that when, once you turn 17, because you turn 17 this month, that all these charges would become adult charges. You understand that, right? I need a yes. Okay. I'm not trying to scold you. I just, you know, it's important for you to understand that it's different in the juvenile system than the adult system. 
So what I can do right now is I can release you back to CTS and they can try and find a place for you. And uh, Ms. Ruiz, if you can talk to, I guess, the, the district attorney's office that are with y'all, I am willing to, I'm more than willing to uh, transfer these juvenile cases to Webb County so that the judge there can make a decision and they can do what's best for Estrella, okay? I don't think it helps her to have to come back to Tarrant County to resolve these cases. I think it'd be better if it was all handled back in her home county. So if you relay that to the court that I'm, if they want to call me, uh, I can sign an order or they can sign, send an order uh, requiring me to transfer it. it. It won't hurt my feelings at all, okay? But we need to do what's best for Estrella. Uh, if the judge there feels like they need to detain Estrella to keep her from running away, that judge will be able to do so at the Webb County Juvenile Detention Facility uh, because of these cases once it's transferred, right? So that'll be, I, I, want, I want to give your judge as much, I guess, discretion as possible. Okay? I don't want okay. to interfere with what y'all are doing for Estrella, okay? Okay. So at this point, when do you think y'all can come and pick her up? Um, I'm not sure, Judge. Honestly, we have no placement. If I pick her up today, we would just bring her back to the office. Uh, okay. bring her back to the office um has she has a uh, family here that she has run away from um right. she has she had siblings that they were an option but she started um using drugs and running away and drinking so the sisters have opted that they can no longer care for her so we have no placement for her at this time judge um i i, I honestly i don't know right i get that Probably the best thing is to talk to your counterpart right now and see if the judge wants to transfer it today. Okay. If I can find the order to transfer today, then at the very least, you would have the detention, juvenile detention facility there in Webb County, uh, so she can at least be there, okay? okay. Um, I'm letting you know, typically on these cases, misdemeanors like this, I do not like to keep the children here in our facility. Our facility is really for kids that are danger to themselves or others. Main danger being a runaway, <clears throat> but you and I know I can release her to you and then kind of stick you in a hard spot. And I don't want to do that to you guys. Right? Okay. So if you can kind of move a little faster with your judge down there, then that helps me kind of work for my end of releasing her as soon as possible for these charges, but then also provides a place for you uh, that you can place her while this case is going on. Does that, okay. does that make sense? Yes. Yes, Judge. Okay. I appreciate that. If you can um, hopefully wait hopefully on it. Sounds, it sounds fair, doesn't it? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So can we, can I count on this like being done before Friday? I hope so, Judge, yes. Right. We'll go, get on the call today and see what can happen so we can do it fast. All right, come Friday, if she's still here at detention for our detention docket, I may just release her to the department directly. Like I don't want to keep her more than, a, I'm trying to be fair to you guys, but I'm trying to be fair to Estrella. Uh, understand, completely understand, Judge. Okay. okay. All right, so Estrella, this is the deal. Um, I'm going to keep you here for now. This is because your history, your extensive history of runaway. Okay? And so I've got to protect you from you. One of the reasons the law says I can keep a child is if you're likely not to appear for court. With your history of runaway, I'm, I'm finding it's unlikely that you'll come back to court, especially because you give a fake name to the police, you know, things like that. Uh, but I will release you to the department as soon as they can come and you know, find a way to come and pick you up and take you back to Webb County. Okay? All right, do you have any questions for me, Estrella? I know you're frustrated. I know you don't like this. Um, you know, we do, this court does CPS cases here in Tarrant County also. And take it or leave it, my best advice to you, there are so many opportunities that Texas tries to make up by being, growing up in foster system. L seriously look at this transition stuff. When you turn 18, how to transition to independent living. It's amazing, free college, assistance with housing, cars, you know, getting all your stuff together they can do amazing things. You just have to be willing to receive the gifts. That makes sense. But if you want to do it your own, that, that's your call. You're an adult. But it's a lot different in that transition to independent living. Um, it's actually the kids that I've talked to that come through this court, uh, they, they're actually, it's amazing how different their lives are. The ones that skip it tend to come back, get arrested for other things. They never go to college. They never finish college. They have relationship problems. The ones that go through the transition, man, a lot of them, their lives are so blessed. So maybe some time to think about what you want to do as you get close to your 18th birthday. Have you started the classes yet? Have they talked to you about the transition to independent living yet? Estrella? Um, 
have they started talking to you about the the independent living or transition to independent living yet? Not yet. I don't know. It starts right about when you're 17. Yeah, we, we have right. we have Judge started in trouble, but we have. She's just really not uh, perceptive to it. She's just um, not wanting to do. Yeah, and and that's her choice, right? Yeah, of that's, course. Yeah. But so. just like you said, they have a lot of opportunities, and if they take advantage, they they can you know come yeah. something good. Free college. That's an opportunity. I know. <laughs> All right, Estrella, do you have any questions for me? Do you understand what's going on? I know you're bummed, but you, I just want to make sure you don't have any questions for me that I can answer while we're while we're talking right now. No. Okay. All right. Thank you, Estrella. Thank you, Ms. Ruiz. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Mr. Governor. If I may ask a quick question. Yes. Uh, I, and the issue being, it's up in the air in terms of how quickly CPS can find a placement for her. Uh, if she is still in detention at close of business, do you want another detention hearing on the docket? So I want her on the detention docket for Friday. And so what happens then is at that point, um, if she's here, I'll probably just release her to the department and it may be locally or maybe an order for uh, Webb County to come and get her or the placement that she was at from Harris County to come up and get her. I don't want her over the weekend is, is my thing. So Ms. That's Ruiz right. is gonna talk to the judge there. I can sign an order transferring the case. At that point, the judge there can detain her in their juvenile facility in Webb County and that way they don't have to worry about a placement immediately. Judge, a placement. If, if I may judge, it, yes. it, it'd be great if we can get the order to transfer to Whip County from, from your office. Uh, th th I think that carry a lot on the law enforcement aspect of it. So that, there's two ways to do this. One, this, the family code allows the CPS judge in Webb County to order me to transfer it. If there's a CPS case going on in a juvenile case, the CPS case judge can order me to transfer it. I have no problem doing it. I like the law in this case, but I can't force that judge to do it. All right. The other option is locally, your DA can file a motion here in this case, or our DA can, and I can transfer it if somebody files a motion. I don't know if I can just transfer a case to another district judge without talking to the district judge or somebody filing a motion. Okay. Now, if you can get Mr. Lewis the, the cause number and uh, the judge's name, uh, I can probably make a phone call and see if they're willing to take the child, and then that may speed things along. All right, is that fair enough? So, yeah, I want to do it. I just want to make sure the procedure is followed. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Thank you. Right, Rudy Valley. Is he under 14 still? No. Just 15. 15, okay. Good morning, Your Honor. Morning. Mr. Lofton, good morning. Good morning. I can hear you. <laughs> good. All right, Rudy. I'm Judge Kim. This is a detention hearing. You've been here for 10 days. So you have to see a judge. I have to look at your case and decide whether you should stay here or I should release you. You have the right to remain silent, but if you give up that right, anything you say at a detention hearing cannot be used against you at any other type of court setting. You have a right to an attorney. If you or your family cannot afford an attorney, I will provide one for you. I'm looking at your case. You're level three unacceptable, so I'm going to detain you. Thank you. I have an excuse, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Lofton. Have a great day. Have a good yeah, day, too. Excuse, Your Honor. Thank you.